I'm Rick, uh, a co-founder of DCAF, and we're a non-custodial wallet like the other two panelists here. And we focus on uh, areas and places that use crypto like a bank. So you can imagine a non-custodial wallet that functions like your Wise app or your Revolut, but it has got all the full features of being on chain. We, we do believe that financial inclusion will happen on chain. And recently we've been seeing a lot of growth in regions such as uh, across Latin America, but uh, mostly actually really recently in Africa, especially Nigeria. And uh, we, but we do see uh, real, really this money or this uh, ability of banking or financial services globally. Thank you so much. Getting somebody who is not crypto savvy, not crypto native to understand this and feel very comfortable about it. How are you guys addressing that gap and the need for education? That's it. That's a really good question. There's a lot to unpack there. Uh, I think it'd be useful to start off with how do we get building a wallet? So we used to run the merchant payments at Solana Spaces, which was like a crypto payments place where you could buy like a socks or shirt with uh, non-custodial wallets and do payments. And that's great. Uh, we recognize this could be the future. Like everyone should be paying with crypto or USDC, but people were coming in off the street, not knowing what crypto was, and downloading uh, the current wallet standard uh, in, in the market, and was spending 20 minutes writing down the seed phrases, uh, trying to understand what NFT trading was, trying to understand what, uh, you know, like meme tra trading, or, or, or all these sort of really crypto features were of a wallet. It was not user-friendly. How are we going to onboard the next billion people if this is the gateway to being on chain. We realized we had to build a wallet. And so we realized that it's all about user experience and you've probably heard that a million times, but it was really about how do we make this just like a Neo bank, just like the current standard, like a Wise app, like a, like a Revolut. So that was really the, the, the logic behind building an app. But in terms of education, we still need to be able to get the word out and educate people. So what we're seeing right now as being really effective is community education programs. And we're seeing that across Nigeria, up in Turkey, across Latin America, all, all these regions through community members, running these events, showing people how to have financial freedom. And we, once again, believe that financial freedom will happen on chain or, or financial inclusion will happen on chain. So we, we use these events to onboard thousands of people each week and we teach them about everything they can do, and we find this sense of community, but all this sense of education and financial education about the future of money, about the future of work. And this is happening with blockchain. And so this is what we're, we're seeing as being really successful at the moment. We think it's a movement that's not gonna stop, and we're gonna th uh, think this education piece is going to really, I think, educate like billions of people. That's amazing. And that I had a, a friend or a queen that like, I knew really well, he was killed, he was shot, um, getting cash out at a bank in uh, Colombia. He actually died, he was revived, uh, and what he was trying to do with that cash was pay his 100 employees out in the Colombian mountains because they didn't have any banks there, there was no payment processes, everything is in cash. The only way you can pay if you want work done is to pay them in cash. He was killed and he was fortunately revived and he had no way of paying these people uh, for, his, for his work and, and doing these projects. He was building ecotourism up there and building a little train network and uh, a, lot of, a lot of really cool things. And it was really helping the community. The community itself had a really dark history. So he came to us and was like, well, how, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna have to pull out all of my investment or uh, like uh, my work there and it's gonna devastate this community. And fortunately, he's now able to pay all of his employees through crypto. These people didn't even have banks before. Uh, there is nothing accessible for them and now they're able to get paid, they're able to have work. He's able to get his money from the US, transfer it in USDC to, to Colombia, pay it out to all of these employees and now they have uh, ability to hold it in dollars. Uh, there's a really volatile currency, uh, Colombian pesos just, and then they can cash it out whenever they want. And not only that, it's not just cash, uh, so he was going to organize a bus to get everyone to cash out at the local town uh, MoneyGram location, but then he realized, or we realized, that you can just call up MoneyGram or WhatsApp them with the, the code that you get from the wallet to just go to your Neobank, which all you need is to set up this Neobank Neki, is just like a 
a phone number. And, and so every, all of them now have this ability to use the local payment methods to hold their money in USD, to protect themselves from inflation, get paid, get work, build the community. And this is all possible through non-custodial wallets and MoneyGram. It's, it's incredible. It's an incredible story. And uh, we're just going to release a video about this soon. And uh, yeah, really excited about this. No, thank you for that. And, and on the creation of the community and how the community drives the product, like, can you can expand a little bit on that? What we find is one of the ways that I think the next billion will come on chain is through community. And we see the community as the educators, as the ones that tell others, go to this MoneyGram because it works really well. It's nicely if you say this to the, uh, you know, the, the, the agent, they'll... Uh, give you cash or, or did you know you can call up by phone and we have that power of community to educate people or, or do you want to trade on a DEX to make money or like you know these type of things or you can send for free there's no gas fees this is how you should use it or, or if this is how it works locally this is our localized knowledge and we can all start through community using uh, educating about localized you know services of, of and how the power of a non-custodial wallet can help them so this uh, I think is really actually the product itself, this edu education, this information, this data. So to give you a specific example, imagine a community being able to uh, have a review like Yelp and tell everyone, hey, if you're, if you're Colombian, this is where you need to go and these are the things that really work well for you and these are the limits and these are the ways that you do it. And it, and it really inspires action and user, uh, user to uh, finish the flow. And, and this power of community, or this community itself is the product. It becomes the product, and this is what will make these uh, this movement of on-chain finance really, really powerful. Now, it's when it comes to like adoption and growth, and maybe a different way to communicate to different audiences. Yeah, I, I think every like uh, I think localization is a big thing, and and this is why uh, you know talking to users is really important, but also making it you know with community leaders to make it really localized, the education, the, the community there. So, for example, I, I see, we see differences in different markets. I think that's a good way to look at it. So, Latin, Latin America, we see a lot of utility uh, markets, like hold dollars, protection, protection from inflation. But in Nigeria, we see people really excited about the future of finance. We see the future of investment, financial services. We see people want to trade money. We want, want, they want to be like on a DEX buying the meme coins. They want to be sending to their money. They want to be part of this community. They're, they're really, like, really savvy with on-chain finance and they're hungry to learn. They're more than, more than other markets and we're seeing that more than anywhere else. I think there was like a stat that showed like in Nigeria, the attitude towards crypto was that you know 95% of people thought it was the future of finance. And, and it really shows with the education piece there. So I think you know, when, when you look at it, uh, and we sort of wondered about Nigeria specifically, like why is it that there's so much adoption and excitement about this? And it broke a lot of assumptions for us. Like it was about freedom. It's about feeling f the freedom to do what I want with my money. I don't want to hold Naira, the local currency. I want to be on chain like all my friends and be a part of this movement. And I want to be able to do whatever I want. I can pull it out into Naira whenever I can. I can trade on a DEX. I can send it to my friends. I can stake it if I want. I can work online and make money entirely in crypto. And this is giving me better opportunities than anything I can have here in the, phys or the, the fiat world, which is, I think, really cool. No, that totally makes sense. It's, uh, it's funny, like when you talk about Africa, right? Uh, I think I heard this. Uh, notion or somebody said when uh, when it came to communications right uh, la like Africa completely skipped landlines and just went to mobile and so the same thing is going to happen in the financial industries like they'll just skip like TradFi and just go DeFi completely right which totally makes sense because then that's that's the quickest way to adoption uh, and Rick I think the biggest learning I've had recently is blockchain saves lives and it's it's you know, we, like I think Jesse, you mentioned it, you said it brilliantly. Crypto is the technology, whatever, searching for a problem. Well, I don't know much of a bigger problem than that. And, you know, it's not just that, it's about financial freedom, it's about economic opportunity, it's about the future of work, it's about the future of the internet. And this is uh, such an important phase. So I think it's, uh, you know, th this is the biggest learning blockchain saves lives.
<laughs> I feel like we should hand out T-shirts saying that blockchain saves lives. But no, that's no, that's 